So, replace the boost sensor, which is this. That was giving us a bad cold. It was basically telling us that the uh, it had reduced engine power. This is also the barometer, barometric sensor, aka known as the boost sensor, which powers the turbo down there. Now, and as you can see, we removed that cover to check this rod because sometimes it gets loose. Tighten up that. Now, this is the massive airflow sensor. So, essentially, all of this coming down into the boost comes down up through here back to the intake. And we'd also see this one here. That's the intercooler. Let me come back. That's the intercooler. And as you can see from the previous hit, it has a slight bend in it. Now, where I showed you air from the massive air flow sensor, which this is your filter box that comes, and as it all connects and runs through, it comes out through this line here, which connects to the intercooler, which runs across, loops in, and comes down through there and up. So, we're going to have to come back and trace the lines again to, to actually see why we're losing power after the boost sensor was, was taken off. Because, as you can see, there is no codes. And as the car, it's warm. It's operating back at the 20 PSI, the radiator, everything is there. And this car has been running for a half hour. You see it hasn't even reached half. As you see, the RPMs are not jumping. Now, we're going to rev it up to 4,000 RPMs. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five, one thousand six, one thousand seven, one thousand eight, one thousand nine, one thousand ten. We let off. As you can see, cooling didn't change. RPMs are not bouncing. However, now we turn the car off and we're going to turn it back on. Now you see she's starting to show off. That's one resolution. That's two. Now she's dancing, but she hasn't cut off. Now the computer is going to pick up and read, and she's going to she's going to balance herself out. Now prior to this video, when we did this, the check engine light came on, and the massive airflow sensor popped up. So now what you see as the needle starts to go up and down, that's the computer trying to read for one of the sensors. Now, if it can't catch or read that sensor, it should trip the check engine light and cool should come on. Now, I could give it gas and balance it out, but I wouldn't recommend that because that's not something you should have to do on a brand new car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit and watch how long it takes before it actually finds the sensor that is fine to find the sensor that is actually looking for which in this case would be the massive airflow sensor so 
while that's doing that, we're going to try to pull live data. As you watch it, as you can see, it's slowing down. It's going through the resolutions. It's going through. It's going through. It's going through. Almost corded. It. So now in this case, you replace the boost sensor. So what you replace in the boost sensor, your next step without you racking up hundreds of dollars on a job trying to chase a ghost. And I call it chasing ghosts because you don't see the check engine light. So my theory tells me I don't see a check engine light. So could it be electrical short? Could it actually be the electrical harness and not the actual sensor? And the only way to actually do that is to actually go purchase the sensor and replace it. So now you have process of elimination. Now, once you replace the massive airflow sensor and you still have the same problem, the only other logical thing you could go to is the intake. Now, this is a car that only has 20,000 miles. If this car had over 100,000 miles, I would say I would have went directly to the intake once I checked the actual sensors. And the reason why I would have done that was just due to the fact that it was a car with, you know, pretty good mileage on it. And sometimes you have to take those intakes out. You have to clean them and go through them. Uh, you know, put a, some people dump them in gas. Some people use brake cleaner. Um, me personally, I like to use kerosene, submerge it, let it sit in kerosene or diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is real good for uh, getting a lot of deposits off of uh, intakes as well as uh, helping unseize motors. So... To go back to this particular car, this is a 2015 Chevy Cruze. It only has 20,000 miles. However, it's been hit. And we all know that when a car has been or suffered from an accident, certain things tend to go wrong. So it kind of makes the job a little bit harder because now you have to treat the car as if it has a lot of miles. And the reason why I say that is because when a car is hit, it's like it's the equivalent of getting a concussion. Uh, it's You got to work through the concussion to get back to 100%. You can't suffer from a concussion and then go right back on the field. Well, same thing for a car. Um the customers have to suffer because now you have to troubleshoot and actually find out what's wrong with their car. And in this case, what I did was I pulled up the diagram for the turbo sensor, for the turbo system. So that now, once I look at the schematics for the turbo and how it works, it allows you to take away looking at the engine and just looking at what the problem could be, which is your boost sensor, which is your boost sensor, your intake, and your map sensor. So if you notice, I said those three things. There's four, which is your intercooler. There's five, which is your turbo. So when you look at the hit on a car, and we're going to go back... When you go look at the hit on the car, if you can remember in the early part of the video, that's in fact, that is in fact the turbo right there. 
So, what we're going to do now at this point is we're going to replace that massive airflow sensor and do process of elimination there. And now we're going to start checking for vacuum leaks. And the reason why we're going to start checking for vacuum leaks is because I'm going to show you. And we're going to check for vacuum leaks and do our due diligence before we just instantly assume that the, the, the turbo is bad or the intake is bad. Because as you can see, that going up and down without the check engine like that, that's an indication to me that we have seeping air, that that's a vacuum leak. My cooling has came down, the heat is running, so now when you turn the heat off, there's nothing change. Now, see the difference now. And now we have a check engine light. But now, if you notice, with the check engine light, it's more in a minute. Just turn the call, turn it back on. And if you notice, the car is not doing what it was doing without the check engine light. But do you see that? Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check the codes. And the reason why I'm going to check the codes is because, as you can see, I'm reading the codes. I guarantee that that check engine light is going to tell me it's the massive airflow sensor. I guarantee it. And what did you get there? Mass or volume airflow circuit performance. Massive airflow map EGR and TP is not within range of the calculated airflow. Actual measured airflow from. And that's the only two codes. Prior to us changing the boost sensor, there were eight total codes. We're down to two. So we'll go here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that code, which means I'm going to reset the computer. Off. Now, as you can see, I cleared the code. Car runs fine. Now, at this point, I could call the client, take it for a test drive. I guarantee you that code ain't going to come on. I'm revving it. I'm giving it gas. The car is definitely completely warmed up. As you can see, she's not doing anything. Car's not doing nothing. A bad mechanic will let that car run, tell the client come pick it up. They'll even put gas in it and have that car run until the client comes. They take off. They ride around. They happy they got their car. They go to turn the car off, turn the car on, and this is what they'll get.
I'm not doing that. I'd rather spend another day tracking this problem, which basically means that this car is going to need more idle time to find out what this problem is. And this problem has to be minor. It has to be minor. It has to be a vacuum leak. It has to be something that we're missing. We have to retrack our steps and figure out what is exactly wrong with this car. Because that's not turbo. And how do I know that it's not turbo? It's dumping. You hear that turbo. You know. Come back down. You see that? Car is back to regular. No check engine light. Now you remember when I turned it off and turned it back on, it was acting funny. So that lets me know that there's a vacuum leak, something that is being missed. And it's definitely not the massive airflow sensor. But I'm going to replace the massive airflow sensor. And the reason why I'm going to replace the massive airflow sensor, even though my experience is telling me that it's a vacuum leak, I'm going to replace the massive airflow sensor so that I don't have any doubt in my mind that, in fact, that it could be. And the reason why is because, hey, oh, it's a new car. Oh, it only got 20,000 miles. A massive airflow sensor going in the hot... Listen, cars do what they want to do when they want to do it, and I've learned that. And you're talking to someone that owns 7.3 diesels, Mercedes Benzes, uh, <laughs> Jettas, BMWs, all of them. Cars do what they want to do when they want to do it. And my history tells me, replace the sensors, do your process of elimination, do the homework on the car, and... More and more research because this is here. This is a minor problem. There's something. This is telling me something was overlooked. This is telling me that I need another set of eyes. I need another set of eyes to actually track why this car is doing this before I give it to the client. Because as you can see, it's there. Now, I'm going to let this car run for a half an hour because sometimes when replacing electrical components, there is, a, there is something called relearning. They're very well known on BMWs. BMWs and Volkswagens and Audis are very known for when changing electrical part, they need to be relearned. So maybe in this case, this is a relearning process. All electrical parts are not always plug and play. So I'm going to play with this for about a half an hour see what we get and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another master reset and I'm going to go check to make sure because I believe once I change this massive airflow sensor I'm going to get the same problem but I'm going to go through the relearning process because as you can see I'm not getting the same thing that I was from the start of this video so just to be sure, before I call the client and get the client up uh, all ecstatic that she's about to get her car back and then she gets it and then it doesn't run, it doesn't run right, and she's back to square one, which is more disappointing than anything. So as you can see, I'm going through what's called the relearn process by turning the car off and on, revving the engine. It seems to be kind of going back to normal. I'm getting a lot of horsepower. I'm not getting any check engine codes. So, I'm going to continue to do this for a few revolutions. I'm going to put the bumper back on, tie everything in. I'm going to take it for a test drive. I'm going to go up to 95, probably take it for a ride up to Delaware, come back down, 
And I'm going to see what she does. She is seeming to do something a little bit different uh, prior to the start of this vehicle. The horsepower is there. I'm doing a resolution. So maybe the computer finally picked up the sensor. But before I call the client and let her know, I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to do this for about another half an hour. See what I get. If the check engine light doesn't come back on and I don't lose horsepower or get me flickering as if like the battery's going dead or what you saw in the video uh, early on, um, I'm going to take it for a test drive and see what I get. Thank you.